<laughs> Hi, when life gives you lemons, why not make lemon wine? Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Again, as always, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notify buttons and I will put one of these out once a week. Okay, this is what we're going to be using to make this wine. We're going to start with one gallon of water. We're going to be using a packet of yeast. We're going to be using five cups of sugar. Uh, we're going to be using my uh, two and a half gallon fermenter, but you only need a good uh, one gallon uh, jar with a good tight fitting lid. We're going to be using up to eight to 10 lemons, which we're going to zest and juice. Uh, we're going to be using a handful of roughly chopped raisins, and we're going to be using a straining bag. That's all I need. Okay, what we need to do now is to bring our water, sugar, lemon zest, and raisins to a boil. One gallon of filtered water. We're going to use five cups of sugar. So, start with one cup. And then we're going to add four more. I want to put the uh, lemon zest and the uh, raisins in a straining bag to make life a whole lot easier later on. This process is a whole lot neater than trying to deal with all of those uh, mashed up strawberries when I was making the strawberry wine. And those are those. Ended up using about uh, half a cup of, uh, of chopped up raisins. And it was a coarse chop. I mean, there's no finesse to it. I mean, I could have just threw them all in a food processor for a couple of pulses and called it a day, but Basically, that's what you got. Tie this in a knot. Put that here for a moment while I give the uh, sugar water a stir. A quick stir. I'll be stirring that again later on. Drop in your uh, zest and uh, raisin mixture and uh, let it come to a boil. Okay, now that we brought our liquid to a boil, we can now go ahead and uh, turn off the heat. Let it come down to nice room temperature, lukewarm temperature, and we'll then add our uh, lemon juice and then we will add our yeast. Okay, now that there are uh, lemonade, <laughs> sweet lemonade, it's cooled down to a nice lukewarm temperature. Next thing we want to do is to pour it in the fermenter. And hopefully with a little bit of luck, I can do this without spilling it all over the table. take our uh, raisin lemon zest mixture, put that where it will do the most good, make sure this is completely empty, every last little bit of lemon wine droplets. We now want to add our lemon juice. Out of eight lemons, I got roughly 
It's about uh, one and two thirds cup, less than that, but around that mark. We'll just go ahead and pour that in. All right, we want to add about uh, a teaspoon of yeast. More doesn't hurt, but then again, you don't need more because the yeast is going to multiply while it's uh, chowing down on all that sugar. So we measure out about a teaspoon. Actually, since this was a packet that I was using for everything else, it's about all that's in there is a teaspoon, which is fine because it means that I don't have to open up a new pack. This is standard uh, wine yeast, by the way. You can pretty much use um, anything that you feel comfortable with using in terms of your wine yeast, but um, Standard Premier Blanc is what I've been using. It's what I started out using. Uh, I got like 11 packets of it, which is about a year supply. So I'm gonna use this up and uh, see what it can do for me before I start uh, switching to something a little bit different. And again, with yeast, all you gotta do is just sprinkle it on there. Don't have to stir it up or anything because it will do its uh, activation without any additional help from you. Go ahead and put your cap back on. And basically, that is it. Uh, this one, I want, this recipe is a little bit different from most of my uh, wine recipes that uh, that I've been working with. For the most part, um, this one is going to stay in primary fermentation for 14 days before you uh, transfer it into um, uh, your uh, secondary fermentation uh, uh, vessel, whether it's going to be a uh, uh, another sealed glass jar that's been sterilized, or if it's going to be a cardboard that's also been sterilized. Everything, of course, has already been sterilized using star sand, so I'm good to go there. But for the next 14 days, uh, the recipe recommends that uh, you stir it once a daily, which is kind of odd. Uh, normally, after day three, you really don't want to stir it any wine because you're going to start introducing air into the mixture, and that uh, leads into the uh, prospects of it. Uh, going bad on you. So what I'm going to do is just use, stick to my standard uh, standard routine. Uh, I may stir it uh, on day one and two, but on day three, uh-uh, that's it. Uh, after that, again, let it sit for 14 days. And once again, once that's done, we'll transfer it into a secondary fermentation vessel. And within about three to six months, uh, the wine will be done. So we'll, uh, in three to six months, uh, we'll give it another shot and uh, give it a taste. See you then. Now in this video, we're finally going to get a chance to open up a bottle of wine that has made it the 12-month distance. It's a bottle of lemon wine that we started 12 months ago. It's now time for that taste test. Now, some of you may know lemon wine as Skeeter P. Some of us don't. However, no matter how you pronounce it, uh, lemon wine, even at the six-month tasting, was pretty interesting. I kind of liked it. Liked it so much at the six-month mark, even though it wasn't done, that I started a batch of lemon mead. Kind of curious to see how that's going to turn out. In this tasting, I can say that uh, uh, this was one of the very first wines that I made. And there were certain things that I did differently from this batch of wine that I now do subsequent for any other batches of wine, in that this wine only bulk aged for like two or three months before I had to bottle it. I don't do that anymore. I can now bulk age my wines for seven, eight months before I bottle it, which has the added bonus of being able to clear the wines up very clearly without having a lot of sediment at the bottom of the container. Um, this wine has been back sweetened. It was back sweetened, I forgot how many months ago, I think just before the uh, six month tasting. So it's it's been at least six or seven months since this wine has been back sweetened. However, without any further ado, let's get to it. All right, now from the onset, this wine is very clear, with the exception of <laughs> a pretty thick layer of, of <laughs> sediment that's layer floating, of around, sediment around, the that's floating the, around, around the bottom, bottom of, the, of the wine bottle. And again, that was due in part due to the fact that I had to bottle it early because I had to reuse those cardboards early so I can use those for another batch of wine. Um, beyond that, yeah, this wine actually cleared up very well. If I can just stop unsettling the sediment down at the bottom but I'm not gonna let that stop me because I knew that going in so we're just gonna get right to this one 
And while I'm opening it up, uh, there were no new members to report at this time. Uh, memberships are an excellent way to help support this channel. Uh, donations to the channel's PayPal account are also very, very appreciated. We are an Amazon affiliate, so if you wish to click on any of the links below, uh, bear in mind that I do get a very small cut. It doesn't come out of the price of the, of the item that you're getting, but it comes out of Amazon's profit, which is a good thing. Um, even right out of the bottle, that lemony smell just comes right through. <laughs> comes real through. I'm not going to pour a whole glass this time. I will later on. <laughs> the little swirl test. Ooh. First thing to hit you is, is lemon. <laughs> I'm trying to see if... Uh, The alcohol, which by the way, this came in at 15.3% AVB, uh, is, you can smell it, it's there, I mean 15%, I mean, you can smell it, but it's not overpowering. It does not overpower that, overpower that, that uh, lemon scent, that's for dog, I'm sure. Hmm. Well, I guess the taste is in the tasting, so let's find out what's going on with this wine after one year. Mm. Hmm. Couple of things. One, could have back sweetened it a little bit more. <laughs> um, it's fine the way it is. It's uh, mm. <clears throat> um, yeah, that citrus notes come through comes through really clear. Uh, whereas before, in the six months of tasting, you were really starting to get some of those harsh notes uh, because fermentation really had not been complete or malolactic fermentation had not yet been fully complete. Uh, that process seems to have been fully completed. So there's none of that uh, residual harshness on the back end. It goes down real smooth. Yep, a little bit more sweetness, I think, for my taste. Um, it's almost, uh, I sweetened it to, again, because I was doing my early batches uh, a bit on the drier side. This is more like a semi-dry wine. A medium or a medium sweet, and this wine would be on point. Chilled, I think, this wine would also be on point, even as it is. Um, This is one of those wines that when you inhale the aromas while taking that first sip, <laughs> it's really it's really nice on the nose. Uh, it definitely will clear you, clean your palate. Mm. If you've ever had a lemon drop or or, or a lemon head candy. It's pretty much what this tastes like. Uh, it's got that bit of a sour note to it. Um, uh, and then the rest of the flavor just balances itself out quite well. Actually, this is <laughs> actually quite nice. One moment. Mm. I can see now why this was one of my early favorites at the six month mark. Uh, this is definitely a wine I intend on making again. Uh, if that lemon mead turns out as well, um, it'll be kind of a toss up as to which one I would make next. But since that lemon mead has still got several months to go, uh, I think in the next uh, probably 
probably the next, within the next two months, I'll probably start another batch of this. Uh, this is a wine that, yeah, I think I would like to have on hand uh, after that 12 month mark. It's been a go-to wine that I would just reach for and uh, pour me a glass, especially now that we're coming out, well, it's still springtime. We haven't hit the months of 90 degree weather yet, but uh, when summertime hits this part of uh, the South, <laughs> Then, uh, yeah, this is, this will be a go-to wine to have. Uh, uh, just have something a bit refreshing, that lemon essence to it. Uh, I'm going to try and <laughs> restrain myself from pouring me some <laughs> man-sized glasses of this because it really is, really is quite nice. Mm. Yep, a little bit more sweetening. Um, you probably will not be able to see it. Hold on, I might do a close up later on of all of the sediment that got swirled up. Uh, I mean, it's just yeast, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, I was tempted to re rack it prior to doing this uh, tasting, but I figured that. Uh, uh, if it serves as nothing more than a lesson to let your wine bulk age for as long as possible before bottling, it's always going to be uh, much better than trying to let it bottle age in the bottle because it's just going to, unless your wine was super clear from, uh, from the onset, uh, you're just going to get that last residual remaining sediment settling on the bottom of your bottle. Some people don't mind it. Uh, I mind it a little bit. Uh, but then I come from uh, when I first started of uh, drinking my wines after the first four to six weeks. So, you know, uh, it's only because I got tired of all of that heavy yeast sitting on the bottom of my wine glass that I decided to, OK, just wait it out and let everything settle down. And I think that's paying off. Not in this particular case, but uh, when this is clear, uh, I think I prefer a much clearer wine without having to resort to the use of uh, 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 fining agents like bentonite or sparkle or anything like that. I think time is really the best way to just let everything just settle naturally and uh, unless you've got a pectin haze issue, uh, it should clear up quite well. So my, uh, without letting this run too long, uh, my thoughts on this lemon wine, definitely, I'm, I'm making this again, okay? <laughs> it's fairly cheap. I've got a lemon lime uh, wine that's currently, uh, no, I just bottled that. Uh, that's been bottled. Uh, it's still, I'm going to give it uh, probably another three or four months of bottle aging before I crack one of those open. Um, but yeah, um, within the next two months, I'm going to start another gallon batch of this. Might make it a two gallon batch, depending on how many bottles I've got uh, available that I can uh, spare for it later on. So there we go. Uh, one year, uh, lemon wine, Skeeter P for some of you guys, uh, tasting. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think the, uh, the weight of the one year uh, really mellowed out the wine quite a bit. Um, it's definitely a wine you can drink from that uh, maybe nine month month ish to twelve months. Uh, but uh, give it a full twelve months, and uh, this is something that uh, uh, you can hand to friends and, and know that uh, they're going to have a pleasurable experience. So there you go, uh, lemon wine. Uh, again, uh, if you like found anything about this channel. Uh, noteworthy, worthwhile, please click on the subscribe button. I would appreciate that. I'm trying to hit 10,000 early next year. <laughs> and I appreciate every subscriber that's, uh, that's clicking on that subscribe button. So I'll see you in the next video, which will probably be another taste testing because I've got two more wines that are ready. Uh, the strawberry wine and the black cherry wine, which at six months had become my new favorite. Although, I don't know, between that and this, it's, it's kind of neck and neck. Uh, so I'm going to give those a, t uh, a try probably the next two or three videos, and uh, I'll see you then. <laughs>